Uh, good morning, everyone. The title of my project is Tinea Sisosikosis in Pigs, with special reference to prevalence, distribution, and economic implications in the Gauteng province. Uh, the project is done in collaboration with Dr. Harrison from UK and is coordinated by the Gauteng Veterinary Services. As Lisa has already mentioned earlier, uh, I won't go much into the life cycle of Tinea Tinea solium, but I just start with the transmission of Tinea solium to pigs occurs upon ingestion of food or water which is contaminated with Tinea solium infected human uh, excreta. Uh, the contaminated material can either derive directly from human feces or via sewage plants after flooding, flooding uh, or sewage sediments distributed on pastures as we might all know that uh, some people use the sewage sediment as the manure for their crops. And for the, <coughs> where, I was, where I said the contaminated, can, contaminated material can be derived from human feces or via sewage plant after flooding. Uh, it is also reported that even after sewage treatments, the tinea eggs can still be viable and infective. So in that way, pigs can also can get infected. Uh, the direct transmission of eggs from infected car carriers have been reported, but this appears to be a rare mode of transmission. <coughs> Since the causes in animals is more of economic importance than of clinical importance as compared to human beings. Uh, since it causes economic loss due to condemnation and treatment of infected carcasses. Uh, the infected carcasses, carcasses are treated by freezing meat at lower temperatures. And it has been reported in 2004 that in the Eastern Cape, when they did the estimate of cystosocosis, I mean the estimate of economic loss due to cystosocosis, it was est estimated that uh, cystosocosis causes about 5 million US dollars per annum. Uh, so the current diagnosis of, of cystosocosis is through meat inspection. Although meat inspection is useful in detecting cystosocosis in heavily infected animals, uh, lightly infected ones may be easily missed. And you can, during meat inspection, you can also have the, mistake, the mistaken identifications due to the dead or degenerated cysts or microscopic similarities in legends that are caused by tenid <coughs> larvae and other tissue larvae such as sarcocystis. Consequently, the use of meat inspection records would either underestimate or overestimate the disease prevalence. Furthermore, meat inspection as a, as a post-mortem uh, diagnostic tool does not avert uh, financial loss that is caused by condemnation and treatment of infected carcasses, and not all pigs slaughtered for human <coughs> consumption are taken to abattoirs to be inspected. <coughs> Although it is known that improvement in public health, sanitation, animal management practices can, <coughs> can be used as a control measure for, for tinnitus and cystic complex, our effective po program Effective control programs require the use of more sensitive and specific diagnostic tools to determine endemicity of the disease. Uh, serological tests have, have already been developed. These are either antibody detecting or antigen detecting uh, serological tests. <coughs> uh, the antibody detecting ones are the ones that are used to determine the exposure of animals to uh, the parasite. And of the ones that, oops, and of the ones that are mentioned here, the Tsang at al is the one that has been shown to be more specific, or the most specific compared to the rest. Then on the antigen detecting ones, the Harrison at, at al 1989 has shown to be more sensitive. Uh, although this, this, uh, although this serological test have been shown to be less sensitive animals with fewer cysts. They are three more sensitive than meat inspection, and they have been successfully used in epidemiological studies. And the, lev uh, the low level of cross-reaction 
be observed from a wide range of ailments and protozoan infections was shown by the Harrison et al. Uh, method. So the objectives of my project were to determine the epidemiology of tinea cystocosis in pigs in Gauden province through visual inspection, serological and molecular approaches. Uh, the first two specific objectives are done, uh, okay, this study is divided into the on-farm and the abattoir uh, studies or surveys. So the first two are done on the on-farm where we determine the prevalence and distribution of cystocosis in live pigs belonging to emerging farmers in the Gauden province. As I've mentioned on my introduction that not all, all animals are taken to abattoirs for slaughter, animals that are for human consumption. So we thought we should also focus on the live animals that, are, that belong to the emerging farmers in the Houghton province. And then the second objective was to determine the risk factors associated with tinea infections in the province. This was done through a questionnaire survey. And those two are the ones that I'm going to present about. And then the abattoir ones, uh, where, I'm, where we intend to determine the prevalence of cystocosis in pigs brought to Houghton abattoirs and to determine the economic implications of tinea cystocosis in the Houghton province. Those ones, we don't have the results yet. So like I've just said, we divided the two, I mean the study into two uh, approaches, the on-farm and the abattoir survey. On the on-farm survey, we're using the mono clonal antibody-based uh, HP10 antigen ELISA by Harrison et al. And then we doing the questionnaire survey. And then for the abattoir survey, we're going to use the same uh, serological assay plus the molecular methods whereby we'll be confirming the cysts that are being collected or identified as tinea cysts in the abattoirs. We're going to confirm that as whether they're tinea cysts or not. And then we'll also use the meat inspection, which is done by the meat inspectors. We'll col col corroborate the serological results with that. And then we're also doing, giving out the data sheet where, <coughs> which is used to determine the economic implications of the disease. Uh, now, like I said, I'm just going to focus on the on-farm survey. Uh, pick uh, blood samples were collected from the pigs with the assistance of the Houghton Veterinary Services. Uh, and the blood was taken to the lab where the was, serum was aspirated. We used the monoclonal antibody-based antigen-detecting ELISA. Like I said, the antigen-detecting ELISA det uh, detects the current infection of the animals. Uh, so <coughs> this one detects the parasite products associated with current infection. And during the validation of this test, uh, they also tested a serum from the tinea hydatigena infected sheep to, as part of validation. And it was found negative. And it was only found that this test is specific for tinea saginata and tinea solum. So you can get the cross-reaction between tinea saginata and tinea solum, but not from tinea solum and tinea hydatigena. So as we know that pigs can also be infected with tinea hydatigena, but it cannot be infected with tinea saginata. So you don't, we wouldn't have a problem of saying, okay, this is tinea solum or tinea saginata. Uh, we also did uh, the questionnaire survey. Here we looked at risk fact questions dealing with the risk factors on uh, risk factors for cystocosis, uh, which are livestock management practices, whether farmers use extensive or what is that, intensive farming practice, or they use the free roaming, uh, free roaming style of management, and then whether livestock has access to human excreta and source of water for animals. Uh, like I said, uh, pigs can be infected through ingestion of water that is infected with, uh, that is contaminated with uh, human excreta. Then risk factors for human cystocosis, we, we, we also looked at questions on whether people have access to treated water, whether they have the soil eating habits, uh, whether how they handle their vegetables before consuming them, the origin of manure that is used in their <coughs> gardens, 
and for the risk factors associated with tenuosis, we ask questions on whether people do meat inspection and how they prepare their meat for consumption. Whilst conducting the questionnaire survey, we also use that as an opportunity to also maybe uh, inform or make public awareness of the disease, uh, where we are telling people how the, the life cycle of the tinea solum goes and how they can possibly prevent infection with or transmission of the disease. We went to all the three regional centers of Gauteng, that is Pretoria, Jamestown, and Ranpantin. And almost all of the, of the visited farms, we found that they, they were positive for CCSA causes, and those are the ones that are, are marked with the stars. So as you can see from the map, it's, it's almost widely distributed in the province. So we looked at the prevalence uh, between Jamestown, Pretoria, and Ranfontein, and we found that Ranfontein had the highest uh, prevalence, uh, and Jamestown had the lowest uh, prevalence. But then when you look at the optical density values of the, uh, when we did the ELISA, we found that Pretoria had the highest uh, optical densities, even though it, on the prevalence side, then it had uh, like 48% wells. Uh, was, uh, Ranpantain had 68%. When coming to the results of the questionnaire survey, 37% of farmers had said that their animals are free roaming animals. And then uh, maybe I should just choose the few. Uh, we, we found that 26% of animals, okay, the farmers mentioned that, okay, about 26% of the farmers mentioned that their animals had access to human excreta. 80% uh, of humans had access to treated water. We had, okay. And then <clears throat> only 26% of uh, the farmers take their animals to the abattoirs for slaughter. 0% of interviewed farmers uh, have gardens in their homes. Uh, as we have seen from, this, from the results, uh, there was a wide distribution of, 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 of cystosicosis in the province, and this can be attributed to the animal management practices in the province, whereby animals are not completely confined but are let to roam freely. And the less sensitive meat inspection used at abattoirs which may have allowed for the infected meat to be passed on for human consumption and parasite circulation in the population. <clears throat> when you compare the prevalence of poor science between the current study and other <coughs> similar studies, by similar studies I mean studies that use the antigen detecting ELISA to determine the prevalence of the disease. Uh, the current study had a lower prevalence, 48.7, than the one that was done by Krichek in the Eastern Cape where she found 54.8%. This is the percentage that, it, that she found when she did, when she used the antigen analyzer by uh, Harrison et al. Because she used different methods, but then I just took that one because then it, it's more relevant to this one. And then they were higher. The results of this study was, showed a higher prevalence than the one that was done in Zambia where they got, uh, they found 23.3%. In Tanzania, they got uh, 3 to 48% prevalence. Northwest Cameroon had 76 and West Cameroon had 11%. And most of these other studies uh, contributed or attributed the high, or the prevalence of cystosicosis to uh, the limited use or the absence of latrines in, their, in the regions where they where they did their studies. And also, what was that? And also the, the management practice, the peak management practices that was done by, by the farmers in those regions. Uh, in the current study, 37% of the farmers let their, fa their animals roam freely during the day, which means that animals may have access to human excreta and get infected should they be contaminated with tinea eggs. Already 26% of the interviewed farmers agreed that their animals might have access to human excreta. 
And although contaminated water, soil, and vegetation are regarded as risk factors for human successful causes, there seem to be less of risk factors in the Houghton province, as it was found that 80% of farmers in the study area have access to treated water. Only 5% and 13% respectively uses sewage sludge as manure for their gardens and have soil eating habits. Um, only about 6 and 3% of family members of the farmers have epilepsy and mental disorder respectively. 73% uh, do slaughter their animals for consumption, but only 39% of those do meat inspection, which is a huge tenuousness risk should the animal species test of is positive. 91% uh, of the farmers mentioned that they, they eat their meat well cooked, which, in, which can lessen the risk of infection. And then only 5% of the farmers have family members diagnosis, diagnosed with tenuousness. Although 100% of the farmers had toilets in their homes, uh, this doesn't guarantee that those uh, toilets are being used by everyone. But uh, we had 100%. Uh, uh, the major risk factors in the current study seem to be consumption of uninspected meat and free roaming pigs. Uh, therefore, the development and use of more sensitive and specific diagnostic tools and maybe amendment or improvement in the uh, meat inspection procedure uh, would help in controlling the disease. Uh, only 16% of the Houghton farmers are aware of cystic and this calls for more workshops, as literature has shown that even though cystic has been declared an irreducible disease, teen infection and disease remain uncontrollable because of lack of information and awareness about the extent of the problem. Thank you.